So I really wanted to try to buy the yarn for my wedding dress here and I actually ended up doing that. Hi, welcome welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Olina and welcome to my knitting podcast. Here I talk about all things knitting, current project, finished projects, yarn, just anything that pops into my head. Um, please stay and knit with me while I talk about what I've been knitting on the past week. As you might notice if you've seen my podcast before, I'm not in my regular setup uh, because I'm not at home. I'm currently visiting some friends. But I really wanted to show what I've been up to this week. So I'm going to try to do a little podcast. I think it might maybe be a bit shorter. I don't know. I have a lot to talk about, but we'll see. But we're just going to get straight into it with what I'm wearing today. And today I'm wearing my porcelain sweater. And I have to say, I am absolutely in love. I finished this a couple days ago now. I actually weaved in the ends for this one on the car ride here. So I have a few loose ends still hanging there. I promise they're all woven in. But since I did the last few ones in the car, I didn't have scissors with me and I've just not gotten around to cutting them afterwards. So I have some loose ones. But this is my porcelain sweater. It's all done. I think that was my goal in last week's podcast to finish this. I think I had about a sleeve then. Maybe I hadn't finished the body either. I can't totally uh, remember. But I know my goal was to finish this. And I did. And I've had so much fun finishing this. Oh, I know I was on the body because I was wondering if I was going to do these uh, accent edges. I was really on the fence about wanting to uh, carry with me the color work uh, color uh, to in the ribbing and do the last few rounds with uh, that uh, color and do the tubular bind up with that color and I decided to go with it. I did it on the body first. Uh, I decided to go with it and I was a bit on the fence still about it after doing it on the body but when I did it on the sleeve I knew I had made the right choice because on the sleeve there are a much larger portion of just white after you finish the color work because the color work line up with the body but the sleeves are just a bit longer than the body if you can see. So since the sleeves turned out to be so white I thought it was really nice to bring the blue back in right at the bottom. I feel like that really ties the whole sweater together. So now that I've done it on the sleeves as well as the body, I'm so happy I decided to go with it. Um, so I think I decided on that pretty quickly after the last podcast because I think maybe I was on the ribbing here on the last podcast. Um, and then I started on the sleeves and I had a lot of fun with the sleeves because they are um, a lot smaller in circumference so there were a lot fewer stitches so I could get a lot more on uh, the color work done in a shorter knitting sessions. So I really got to really dive deep into the color work in each knitting session I had. But with the first sleeve I had a bit of a problem because I was knitting color work, it was dark because it was quite late and I ran, I ran out of my first skein of blue mohair because all of the body and the start of the first, I think down to here on the first sleeve, all of that was done with one skein of mohair. So I thought I don't need a whole nother skein of mohair and I knew I had this little ball of leftover mohair in that color. I think I knew I had about 10 grams, maybe 15. So I knew it was like a ball that was going to be this big. So I went up to find that in the dark and I pretty immediately found a ball that was about this large in my leftover mohair stash. So I did not turn on the lights. I did not use my flashlight, not anything. I just thought okay this is it. It was a dark color so I was pretty sure that I had found the right one. But then I knit the rest uh, I knit the rest of the color work and I started to knit the white part as well and then I was going to end it for the night so I just wanted to like 
use my flashlight to uh, admire wor my work, look closer at it. And when I did that, I noticed that the mohair I had been using for the last few rounds was green. <laughs> it was uh, a very similar gr green to the blue. It was a bit dusty, about as dark as the other one, but it was green <laughs> instead of blue. And I had a moment where I thought, how noticeable is this really going to be? Do I have to frog it? Can you even really notice? And in the porcelain in the long group that I have made on Instagram, I asked and most of them said that you couldn't really see it because I sent them a picture of it um, just, just using my flashlight uh, that evening. But when I woke up the next, and I said, not that noticeable. But when I woke up the next morning and I saw it in daylight, it was quite noticeable. So I spent a good chunk of that next day's knitting time ripping back because I decided for this sweater that I've already used so much time on and yeah, invested my time and energy on this sweater and a sweater that I already love so much, I'm not going to uh, let that little bit of wrong color mohair ruined the sweater for me. I'd rather frog it and love it 100% that than have uh, regrets. So I did that and I did knit it back up with the right color mohair. And because I found that other small little ball of mohair and I'm very glad I chose to do it with scraps instead of opening a new ball of um, a new skein of mohair because I ended up only using like seven grams of that little ball as well. I didn't even use of that for the second sleeve. Um, so this uses very, very, very little uh, uh, of the color work color. This is the size medium and I also did all the uh, accents on the body and the sleeves and I ended up using just over a skein of both flora and the kid silk because this is knit in drops flora and drops kid silk in white and then in blue. I didn't say that, but that's what it's knit in. Uh, and I got away with in my size medium to like 57 grams of drops flora and 32 grams of drops uh, kid silk, I think. Maybe 60 grams of flora. So not much at all. And I think if you need a smaller size and without these accents, you can get away with just one skein of each. I also didn't use that much white. So this is a really lightweight sweater, but because of the color work, it has um, a lot of like these panels that are um, basically knit with double strand because um, the floats behind it make the fabric almost double. So this is a really warm sweater, even though it's super lightweight. I think it came out to 399 grams, which is quite a light sweater. Other sweaters I've made that are this warm usually are like 600 to 700 grams. So it's really nice to have a sweater that's this warm and still super light. And just as I predicted when I started uh, finishing this like leaf border and being able to try it on, I'm pretty sure that this is going to be my absolute favorite sweater this year. I am in love. I love <laughs> Um, like the porcelain vibes this uh, gives. I love that I did color work. I love blue and I love these colors together. They are like perfect together. It's just enough contrast um, but not too much. The blue is kind of dusty. I am obsessed with this project. Um, I want to wear this sweater all the time but also it has a lot of white in it so I'm a bit uh, scared to use it when cooking or playing with my toddler but I am obsessed with this sweater I almost want to make another one um, but I think I'm not going to do that but I have been looking at um, the porcelain sweater little sister that I think has just been released or it's going to release this next week the terracotta sweater the terracotta sweater also by Lena Holm Samsø and I've seen that in white and burgundy and I also think that looks so good. But I think I'm going to take a little break from color work and just do some plain stockinette. 
but this is uh, definitely a walk in my love for color work and I'm going to incorporate more of that this year. Uh, but I think we can move into my whips and <laughs> even though I'm traveling I've brought with me pretty much all of my whips um, because I'm not a light <laughs> uh, traveler, at least not when it comes to knitting. I will pack with me less clothes so I can bring more knitting. But the whips that I currently have, uh, this one I brought from home and it's not finished yet. This is the Bendix uh, Kragegenser by Industrik, the Christmas sweater I'm knitting for my son. And this is very close to being finished. I have done the whole body and now I'm working on the sleeves. I started this sleeve today and it's been working up pretty quickly so I think if I knit on this tonight I can finish both the sleeve and the second one so I really want to do that so I can like eliminate my whips. Um, so I've been focusing quite a lot on this one. Um, this is knit in Tin Marine Oil by Sanna Skarn in I'm not quite sure what color, but it is um, some kind of green. I would say it's a bit like olive, maybe. It's a really, really nice green color. And when I saw this, I just had to have it because it's no longer in production, which means it was also half off when I bought it, but I just could not um, let this color go. It might be the only time I would ever see it, so I had to get it. I got four skeins and I'm on my <coughs> I got four skeins and I'm on my third one now. I think I might have to dip into that fourth skein. But I think what I'm going to do with the leftovers of that fourth skein is to make my son some type of um what's it called? Hat. Uh, I'm going to make him a hat with the leftovers, but this is where I am. Uh, the pattern for this originally has uh, ribbing, but I've chosen to do a folded over hem. I'm not the best at those, so it's rolling up right now, but I'm going to wash and block it and hopefully that will make this edge straight. I'm going to do the same on the sleeves and yeah, I'm just really excited to finish this, sewing buttons and have it ready. I'm knitting this in the size three years just so it will fit uh, definitely next Christmas and hopefully for some time after that. Um, and then I did bring another with, with me from home that I haven't knit on while here yet but I did knit on it a bit before we left and that's my um, Eva cardigan and if you watched last week you know that I said that while I hadn't worked on the Eva cardigan that week, I had finally gotten it back on the needle uh, after finishing the 4mm part of this. Um, and since it was back on the needle, I did knit a little bit on it just when I needed some simple stock net. And that led to me finishing doing all the increases and I've actually separated the sleeves now. So, and worked a bit in the round, after, not in the round, but back and forth after doing that as well. Um, just as last time I made the Eva, I've been struggling with this. There is something about those E increases I just can't get right. So when I was ready to separate for the sleeves the first time, I counted my stitches and not one place on this cardigan that had the right amount of stitches, increases, Nothing. I It was all wrong. I had to rip back and just rip back to a point where I knew it was right and then do it again. There's something about these stitches. It just confuses me. I can't get it right. I struggled with it when I made the Eva cardigan for myself. I'm struggling with it now. So apparently I learned nothing. <laughs> but I'm past that now. I didn't get up. Uh, I did not end up with the right amount of stitches for one of the sleeves. I think I have one stitch too little, but that mistake was like at the very start of this and I was not going to rip back absolutely everything to fix that. So I'm just not going to do um, the first increase on <clears throat> that sleeve. 
and that will just have to be good enough. Um, but yeah, this is uh, the Christmas present for my sister and at this bit it might as well be her birthday present but hopefully now that the porcelain is finished I'm starting to finish some other projects this will get more at, uh, attention I, it's back on the needle it's plain um, it's just plain stocking at back and forth um, so I think this will get more attention just when I need something very mindless um, because apparently it's not very mindless to, for me with the increases because I do them wrong but now it's at a mindless uh, place so hopefully I'll get this more attention <clears throat> the other Christmas gift I'm still netting on the socks for my brother while those should probably be a priority because he's the person in my life that gets the least uh, amount of knitting for me I was just not motivated to bring socks with me uh, while I traveled. I did not want to knit socks while I was with a lot of kids so those stayed at home. I was just totally un uninspired when I looked at them so I thought there's no point in bringing those um, but I can show uh, my last whip. I just started on that today and then I can show uh, all of the yarn I brought with me if you want to see um, how I pack so this is what I just started on and this is going to be the Violetta Pullover by Eve Knit they are having a knit along they've been having a knit along since the start of December I think but I was very busy in December doing a lot of other knitting and it's my April cardigan. I tried to knit Christmas gifts and Christmas ornaments and then all of a sudden I knit a Christmas dress. So I was busy in December and then since I didn't get to finish everything in December that business has kind of carried over into January. But now, January 19th, um, I think 11 or 12 days before this knit along ends, I found the cast on. If you want to knit it, this with me, I do have a code in my description, Stricke Oline, which will get you 50% off the pattern until this knit along ends. The knit along ends uh, when January ends. I don't know if this is going to be finished <laughs> by then, but I'm just going to knit it a little bit here and there. But if you want to start with me now, I have a code that gives 50% off on the pattern and this is where I'm at right now. I think I've done like 12 rounds of the ribbing on the neck. Uh, you have three different options for the neck. You can either just do uh, like a single layer of nets or you can do a double folded collar or you can do like a cowl neck. I've decided to do the double folded. I think that's a really nice classic look. Um, I prefer that. This one has that. I think all of my favorite sweater has a double folded neckline, honestly. Um, but yeah, cast that on today. Uh, this was of course some of the yarn I brought and not only did I bring enough to cast this on, I brought all the yarn I would need for this sweater. This is a five day trip I think. We got here Wednesday and we're leaving Monday. We are two adults with three children, all like one is three years old and the rest are under three years. So I'm not getting a lot of knitting time, but I brought all of the yarn I would need for this sweater. Just cast on today and it's Friday, so I've definitely overpacked. But the yarn I'm using is Drops Flora in this lovely um, pink color and I also have Drops Kid Silk in pearl pink and together I think they're turning out exactly how I wanted them to be. I really like dusty pink, a really light pink. So I'm having a lot of fun knitting on this as well even though I've just gotten to the ribbing on the neck. I'm really excited to get to the lace part and the cables. Um, I do really want to knit a more challenging pieces of knitting this year that really uh, makes me intentional with my knitting time and when I'm knitting on it and really makes me focus on my knitting. So I think this one as well as the porcelain will definitely do that for me. So I've cast 
on now and we'll see when I finished it when I finish it so those are my whips I have here last week I talked about wanting to finish I think three sweaters and that was I have shown two of them I have finished one of them the porcelain sweater I did not finish the Bendix Kragbode but I have finished the teddy bear sweater and that was kind of the most important because that is the birthday present for one of the boys we are visiting and this in size 45 years and I did it in this Fellesköpefarge colors instead of the typical like bare face. The mom of the boys we are visiting loves this. Um, the recipient loves this. I love knitting it. Um, so it's knit in Drops Charisma in the color forest green. Um, what's it called? Lemon and olive. And yeah, I finished it. It's just a plain raglan sweater really. And instead of knitting it all in one color, I do stripes on the body just right underneath the sleeve. And then on one sleeve, I also do one with the olive one just because that is the closest to how the apparel for Fellas Shopper looks. And I did finish it, super pleased with it haven't weaved in ends but I'm going to do that maybe tonight or maybe I'll make uh, someone else weave in the ends uh, so I can give it away before we leave but it's finished it's not been given away yet because of the ends but yeah that is my only finished uh, no it's not my only finished piece this and the porcelain so everything in frame now is what I have finished this week and I'm really pleased with it actually that I finished two out of the three sweaters I wanted to and the last one I think I'll probably finish this evening so I think that's really close to hitting the goal um, and I think my goal for next week is to <laughs> get down to a bit, uh, a bit of fewer whips because I have been circling around like five whips ever since uh, the start of December <laughs> so I'm hoping to get to a place where I only have two whips sometime soon but I don't know I'm not going to stress about it because I want to knit what I want to knit but it would be nice to want to knit a bit fewer things at a time but that's it for the teddy bear sweater by Petit Knit. And then I can show everything, all of the yarn I brought with me. Oops, just in case, I brought with me this whole bag. As you can see, that's quite large, and this was stuffed. Of course, I brought with me my bullet journal for knitters. I also brought another of this to give to my friend here, because she's also a knitter. That's also why I packed so much. I wouldn't pack this much if I was going to visit someone who's not a knitter, but because we're both knitters, um, I hope we would get more knitting time because of that, because we both would prioritize it. And also I wanted to show her all of my nice yarn and plants. But yeah, here <clears throat> are more of the yarn for the Eva cardigan, of course. I think I brought with me six skeins, because of course... You would need six skeins of that on top of everything else. I brought with me four skeins of this Drops Baby Merino that I still hope I'm going to have the time to knit. Some pants, uh, the chunky rib pants in size one to two years. I still hope I'm going to do that by the time we leave Monday because it's a gift for one of the kids that live here and I don't really want to ship it by mail so hopefully it will be done by the time we leave. And I brought with me the drops flora that's left uh, from my porcelain sweater, as you can see, the denim blue and the white. Because while I was knitting on the porcelain sweater, because while I was knitting on the porcelain sweater, I did notice that I was going to have quite a lot left over of both of these yarns actually. So I thought, hmm, what can I make with them? And I saw that I had like at least 300 grams of each. And then I started thinking about the melange sweater by Petit Knit because the first thing I knit with these two colors together was the melange sweater junior for my son actually. I made that last May 
so I thought I might have enough yarn for that and then we'll get another uh, match. I love family matches so of course I had to check that out and for my calculations I do have enough yarn so hopefully this is going to turn into Milan sweater and just because I recently had that idea I was so excited that I just had to pack it with me. This is also a really simple project. It's just stocking at it's super easy you don't really have to think a lot so I thought this would just be a great project if I want something uh, if I want to do a self-care knit that is really mindless so I brought all of the yarn I would need for that sweater as well and of course all of the sweater all of the yarn for this uh, violet pullover um, and that's all <laughs> the yarn in here so enough yarn for four projects and um, three of them adult sized because you need that of course for a five day trip and then um because we are both knitters and this place has one of the best yarn stores i know about we did visit that they sell drops in store uh, and I don't know about a lot of stores that actually does that so we did visit there because I did talk a little bit last year uh, about knitting my wedding dress this year because we do <laughs> hope to get married this year we are not very good at planning so it's still not 100% planned when uh, <laughs> really but we do hope to get married this year maybe September or later in the year and I really want to knit my wedding dress. I think I've imagined having a homemade dress my whole life. My mother got married in a dress she had sold herself. So I guess I just always imagined myself having some of the same. But I'm not um, that into sewing. So I've always imagined it more like knitting related. And uh, sometimes last year I got a lot of ideas for how I think I wanted to be so while I was here I could see drops yarn in person I could see some sunnets gone in person I could look <laughs> at a lot of different yarn feel them look at the prices of course um so I really wanted to try to buy the yarn for my wedding dress here and I actually ended up doing that so I can just show you <laughs> what I ended up with Here is all the yarn for Project Wedding Dress. Um, so I'll show you a bit what I think. So first off, I have this mohair yarn and I have 15 white ones and 15 of this kind of very light blue color. And what I think I want to do with this is to combine them. Yes, I think this would combine into an even lighter blue and I kind of want that as well and then I want to make that like what you would have under your dress to make it poofy I want to make that but with mohair and have it over my dress kind of tie it around my waist to have it over my dress to make it more poofy so I'm going to try to make that with mohair um, and combine this I think that could be really cool to just have a hint of blue because I love blue so of course I wanted my wedding dress to have something blue um, so that's kind of my idea with that I think I'm going to what I'm thinking is to do uh, an eye cord to be able to tie it in the waist and then pick up stitches and increase really rapidly so you get um, it really bunches up and creates a lot of volume around the waist so it creates a lot of volume going out uh, and since this is so light and fluffy mohair I hope that with this being light and fluffy knitting it on a large needle that I kind of get the look I want um, I have to do some gauge swatches but now I have my mohair super excited about that and then I got uh, for the main dress, like the white wedding dress, I got Sanneskarn for that. I got uh, Sanneskarn Sisu. This is um, Superwash. It is uh, 
it is both wool and a bit of nylon and I think having a bit on, of nylon in it might actually be a good idea just for it to hold the structure because I do worry a bit about it being quite heavy because it's going to be a like full length dress in wool so having a bit of nylon just to strengthen the yarn and kind of try to hold the shape of it might be a good idea and I'm going to hold that with alpaca felletra just because I don't want to have mohair next to skin for a whole day I think alpaca felletra is just a bit softer that's I think it's 100% alpaca just a really thin strand of alpaca almost like a mohair but not as scratchy in my opinion so I'm going to hold these together I have not gauge swatched yet but I think four millimeter maybe four and a half um do a quite um tight fitting top and then like maybe an a-line skirt or something definitely not as rapid of an increase from the waist to the skirt on the wedding dress as on like the skirt I'm thinking of doing in mohair um, but now that I have the yarn I'm super excited to start gauge swatching to start trying a bit of different things to see if I can make like my vision of my dream wedding dress and um, I am a bit afraid that I don't have enough yarn they only had 20 skeins of uh, Sun and Scan Sisu in the right dye lot and right color so I hope that 20 skeins is enough for my Christmas dress. I used uh, 10 and a half skeins of Drops Flora and Drops Flora is a bit um, longer than Sun and Scan Sisu, I think like 40 meters maybe. So I'm excited to see, I feel like I just have to knit this whole dress now just to see if I have enough yarn. But um, I think that's a really exciting yarn purchase. I'm really excited to get started on it now. It's still only January, so I have quite a long time, but since I have to figure out my gauge, figure out everything, um, and I've not really knit a lot uh, on freehand for quite a long time. I knit everything on freehand a few years ago, but it's been a while, and this is quite an important project, so I'm a bit nervous, but it's going to be really fun. And then I did also get some more hair that's not for my wedding dress, as you might see. This is a really bright green. I think it might be called Parrot Green. And I'm going to pair this. If you've seen me before, you probably have seen the really bright green in the background of my videos. And I figured out that I want to pair that bright green with this bright green and make the Paul cardigan. I can't really remember the designer's name, I'll write it on screen, but I want to make the pole card again, I really like the construction of that one and I do want to branch out a bit when it comes to what designers I knit from this year, so I thought that would be a great addition to my wardrobe and also having a card again that's not white or grey <laughs> would be great, so that's... Um, kind of everything. It's a bit cold in the room where I'm recording right now so I think I'm going to wrap up. I want to get back to my knitting, finish my whip, do gauge swatches. Another thing I did buy though, I did buy another 4mm needle. I really needed that so made sure to get that as well because the wedding dress will probably be on the needles for a long time so it would be great to have more than one 4mm needle. But that, I think that's everything I have to say, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, podcast episode. It's a bit different than what I usually have just because it's cold and I'm visiting, so I'm trying to not talk for too long. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like and a comment. And if you want to see more from me and follow along on the journey of making this wedding dress, please subscribe. Bye!